Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. Today, as you can tell, we're going to be dealing with snow clearing tools, and in particular, this Honda snowblower. With winter fast approaching here in Canada, snow clearing tools have to be working at top notch in order to deal with the amounts that we get. So, the machine that I have here is a Honda, and it's model HSS1332. It says 13 horsepower with a 32 inch blade. When we first moved into this house, we never had a paved driveway. It was gravel, and this machine took a lot of use and abuse. And inside of the auger and the tunnel, it really shows. So if you can see, the tunnel's scratched up a lot. The auger's lost a lot of paint and ended up rusting. And inside the impeller housing, we got a lot of rusting and paint scraped away as well. And down below from the days of clearing with gravel in the driveway you can see that a lot of rocks have come through and scratched the tunnel housing. The scraping blade on the bottom is not such a big deal but it's definitely roughed up. Our last winter was quite mild compared to normal and as a result the snow was denser packed and wetter and heavier. I found that the snowblower was having a hard time clearing and it became clogged regularly. I would spend half of my time clearing just getting snow out from between the auger blades. I think a lot of it was due to the amount of friction caused by the rust buildup as well as the scratching on the tunnel and the impeller housing. I actually brought the snowblower to Honda for servicing the year before and I asked them to do a paint touch up. They ended up putting a matte black finish on the tunnel on the inside there and I think as a result it actually added more friction to the pathway of snow. And inside the chute you can see the effect of all the gravel that's been thrown up through there. It's pretty much been sandblasted down to the bare metal. Yet another surface of friction that can slow things down. So before we get a lot of snow this year, I'm going to try and do a bit of maintenance on this system. I'm going to try removing the augers, getting them ground down and repainted, and same goes for the tunnel itself. Hopefully by reducing the amount of friction inside, we can get a lot better snow clearing when the winter fully arrives. And with that, let's get to removing the auger system. So before I begin this process, I do want to let you know that I am not a mechanic. My methods are my own. I'm improvising as I go. I've never done this before and my procedure is not to be taken as proper procedure for any of what I'm about to do. So if you try this at home my way, you do so at your own risk. So just to illustrate what I've done to make this a more comfortable process, I've elevated the snowblower up on some rigid foam insulation that I had lying around. I just cut it into strips to build up some height. I've put some fire retardant overalls over the front where I'll probably be doing some grinding and styrofoam being what it is could be easily ignitable. Other than that we're just going to be figuring this out as we go and hopefully we end up with a good result. So to begin, I'm going to be removing some shear bolts and I'm going to start on the impeller. And there we have it, that's bolt number one removed. So also, as you can tell now, the impeller will spin freely and independently of the auger system. Next on the list, I'll take out the shear bolt on the right auger.
Right, and next I'll remove the left auger shear pin. And next I'm going to remove the plastic covering just above the bracing bar on the auger system. But in order to get to the bolts, this plastic cover has to be removed. And we'll also have to remove the securing bolt for the headlight. And for removal of the headlight assembly, we just need to take out a 12 millimeter bolt right here. And now that we have that cover removed, we can see the chute motors, adjustment motors. But we can see the four bolts that we needed right there to be able to release that auger assembly support bracket. So one other thing to note as well, after you remove that cover, there is a wire that's going down into the auger support bracket. It has this wire coming out of it. It can be disconnected, it's just a push plug. So you can just haul the two connections apart. With mine in particular, the green wire goes into the blue and black goes into the black. Just for reconnection purposes later. So without that, I don't think the support would actually come off because it is a very small hold. And in the front, See the wire comes down through this tubing here down into the actual mechanical box there, the gearbox for the augers. So I don't want to mess around with the gearbox, so I just disconnected those two wires and we should be good to go when it comes to removal. Alright, so with all that done and said, it's time to start removing. So let's start with that support bracket. Those are 12 millimeter bolts, so we'll begin by removing those. As you can tell by that crack, I guess there was a bit of thread lock around there. We'll keep that in mind for reassembly.
All right, so those bolts are off. So now we'll move on to the side bolts, starting with the 10 millimeters. And there's three on either side that are 10 mil and 112 in the middle. Again, there definitely felt like there was some thread lock around those. You may want to go buy some thread locker when we go to reassemble. Now we'll move on to the 12 mil in the middle of either side. Now, there's the brace, the auger. I got a feeling there's going to be another bolt from the middle drive assembly, but we'll find it very shortly. And there is a washer on these bolts, the 12 mil bolts on the side. Still locked in. I think I know exactly the pin which to take out. There's one just inside here before the shear bolt, and it has a cotter pin through it. So we're going to try that. So this is the bolt in question that we're looking at. So we'll start by straightening out the cotter pin. Get a grip on the cotter pin and haul that out. Keep in mind as well that the augers on the front are now loose, so we don't want that to just drop on our leg or our foot if we manage to get this pin out. Try and take the weight off it a little bit as well. Okay, cotter pin is out. Still in good shape. I get the pin a little tap. There is a washer that just fell down. Find that. Okay, 
That's right there. Now let's see what this pin. There it is. And that looks like a sheer pin. I think. Maybe not. I don't see any sheer grooves in it. Alright, now that we have all the pins and everything removed, I'm going to try and remove the auger assembly and see if it comes out. And there we have it. It's just the little side plates. And now that the augers are out, we can have a better look at the tunnel and the general condition of it. It's not too bad. Definitely uh, could be better as far as my standards go. So we're going to make it better. So that's most of the disassembly complete. As far as the impeller in the middle, I don't know if that'll come out. Yes, it will. Okay. There we go. So that's the impeller. So we could also take that for sandblasting as well. If we can get somebody to do it for us. And all this in here, we'll sand that down, give it a nice glossy coat, and hopefully the snow will ride out of there like lightning. Grease lightning. And guys, just to finish up our disassembly, just because it's so easy, and we already remo removed the shear pins earlier, the augers in the condition that we've already prepped. Off. And off. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And continue on. Next day we'll find someone uh, that can sandblast those parts for us. We'll get some nice Honda red paint. Start grinding out the inside, getting it down to bare metal, and we'll go from there. Alright, see you next time, guys. That's it for now. Peace.